Hello everyone, in this video will be uh, how to stream with open broadcaster software slash how to stream on YouTube and the combination of both. Basically I'm going to show you how to use open broadcaster to stream live on YouTube. So first thing you have to do is you have to download open broadcaster software. There will be a link to the description, it's free, everyone can download it without issues. Once you have it, make sure you run it as administrator, run as admin, otherwise you may have problems with um, recording your audio, your microphone. So, once you have Open Broadcaster opened, you will have something like this. Now, I have my scene set up. Uh, I'm not sure if you will have a scene by default or not, but just in case, I'm going to show you how to make a new scene. Right-click in the Scenes window, you go Add Scene, and you have a new scene. Now, you have to go to the Sources window, right click again and add a capture now you can add all sorts of captures windows camera still images and so on but for our purposes since i'm a gaming channel uh, and my re the requests for these videos were gaming related i'm going to show you how to stream a game so you add a game capture and make sure your game is on right now your game is running so you will be able to detect it you will see the applications list and on that list you have to pick your game, the one you want to live stream. So you pick it, you click OK, and from now on you shouldn't have to bother with the setting anymore, it should be saved for further use. Then you go settings and let's start going through the settings. The first one is your profile, you can set up settings profile, for example SW Tour is the game I stream, and that's how I name my profile. Nothing too special in this tab. Moving down we go to encoding and that's very important. Now, first, uh, the most important thing is your bitrate, uh, the thing you see that I set to 2500. Now, for 720p streaming, resolution of 1280 by 720, YouTube accepts bitrates from 1500 to 3000. So, I picked uh, 2500. That depends mostly on your um, internet connection, on your upload speed. You have to check that, you can check it on, um, I believe, speed test. If you Google it, you will see a connection speed test. I believe my upload speed is is 3.5 megabits, so yeah, uh, that's that's okay for me. I suggest using um, constant bitrate. I've never streamed in variable bitrate, but basically bitrate affects quality, so I recommend it to be constant. Well, actually, variable bitrate doesn't decrease quality. It's it's meant to, um, how shall I explain it? It's meant to save bandwidth when bandwidth is not needed. But su such a thing is not required here on YouTube. Uh, if you have the connection speed, just set a value that is lower than that and go with it, and go with constant. Uh, enable constant bitrate padding. You enable that too. I believe um, you should disable that if you change bitrates midway through streaming, but I don't know why you would want to do that. Audio encoding, you can uh, leave it as I set it. it. Should be okay like that. Moving down to broadcasting settings, here you can use to which service you want to stream, for example, Twitch, YouTube, and so on. Now, for the purpose of this video, we're going to leave it on YouTube and stream to YouTube. On server, pick the primary YouTube server. Play path stream key, we're going to leave that for now, we're going to come back to it later. Uh, moving on down, you can set the settings as I did. Um, start and stop stream hotkey, you don't really need that, you can use it from, you can use a button that is on the main window of Open Broadcaster, so um, I don't set them in case I accidentally hit them and stop the stream. Moving on to video, here you set your resolution, the resolution that you're streaming. Now keep in mind that it doesn't have to be the resolution of your monitor, it could be proportionally lower. For example, my monitor's resolution is 1920 by 1080, but I can scale it down to, uh, you know, proportionally to 1280 by 720. And why I'm streaming in the lower resolution? Because my upload speed is not high enough to support bit rates required to stream such high resolution in good quality. And also, my computer is not uh, powerful enough to encode such high resolution in real time, because that's what live streaming is. You're doing real-time encoding, like real-time rendering, basically. So if you have a 16 by 9 monitor, such as 920 by 1080 
Um, I suggest leaving it like that and just playing normally and everything will be all right. And if you have other aspect ratio monitor, I recommend setting it to windowed mode, setting your game to windowed mode and setting that exact resolution or proportionally higher. Now, uh, I don't use the downscale. I guess the downscale would be it will be the same if I say if I set my normal resolution at custom and then set it to downscale to that, but I don't know, I just don't use it. Now keep in mind that if you set lower resolution like I did, your game actually plays at normal re resolution. The way you see your game on your computer, it plays normally, it doesn't play on the lower resolution. Now frames per second, uh, I believe YouTube is restricted to either 30 or 35 frames per second. Uh, I picked 25 because Star Wars The Old Republic doesn't really require uh, that much frames per second, doesn't have so much motion, and lower FPS makes higher quality for the same bitrate. If I am to explain it uh, in a simple way, bitrate is the amount of data you transfer, and that's the main thing that determines video quality. Uh, the amount of data used to encode each frame determines the quality of that frame. The, the higher the data, the higher the quality. And so if you stream with a certain bitrate and you compare a stream with, with that bitrate of the same thing with 60 frames and with 30 frames, the one with 30 frames will have higher bits per frame and therefore higher quality. So uh, I think 25 bits per second, I mean 25 frames per second, at least for Star Wars The Republic is, is a good value. Okay, moving down to audio. You have to pick your audio device and your recording device. Uh, they will be, um, if, you're, if you're using non-USB devices, like non-USB microphone and speakers, they will most likely be the default one. But if your speakers or and microphone are USB, you may have to pick the exact device. For example, my microphone is USB, so I picked uh, my microphone. You can set your push to talk key, you can set mute keys and so on. Um, on the bottom you can send on the bottom you can set boost. I recommend setting it to one, which is the lowest value. That is if you don't want artificial increase of your volume. Uh, if your voice is too low, for example, I mean too quiet, then you can set the microphone boost to some higher value. Okay, that's enough for audio, going to advanced. Now I recommend leaving general audio and network the way they are. And going to video, you have to set your keyframe interval to say one. For some reason, when I set mine to auto, the live stream was cutting. It was like freezing once in a while. So uh, set it to one and it works fine. And also the, the profile we can leave to high, but the preset, the default value of it is very fast. Now, what do those mean? Basically, if you go lower down to fast, slow, slower, and so on, you increase the quality, but you also increase the CPU load, the load of your processor. So you may start experiencing serious frame rate issues if you go down that scale. And if you go up, the quality decreases, but the strain on your computer also decreases. So the default was very fast, and I figured out that I can keep up with uh, 25 per second when streaming, even if I go to faster. So I went and selected faster and now the quality is a little bit better and I can still manage to stream without issues uh, but that's that depends on you if you have issues with very fast like frame rate issues try going to super fast or ultra fast and if, if everything's okay you can try, try going down and lower that scale okay and finally the microphone noise gate now um, that's specific to your microphone. If your microphone is very sensitive and it catches noise, like mine, for example, uh, you have to enable that and tinker with the threshold settings until the noise is properly suppressed and your voice is still normal. Now, like I said, you may not need that. That depends on your microphone. Uh, I, for example, use the noise gate after edit audio filter in my audio editing software right now where I'm making this video uh, so I, and I'm using it also on live streams but you may not need to use that so that depends on your microphone you should uh, play with it and see what's the best value for your purpose and now we're moving on to YouTube now you have to be logged in and you have to go to your video manager 
and right under uploads you will see live events uh, now to to make live events i believe you have to be a youtube partner and you have to have a certain amount of subscribers too i'm not sure about the subscribers but partnership for sure so you click live events and you click a new live event on the bottom right i mean on the top right and you'll go into this screen which looks very much like the traditional upload screen you type your title you set your video to unlisted or to public uh, for live streams you should set them to public and if you don't want them to start right now you should add uh, a starting date like uh, that's how i schedule my live streams you can pick a day today or tomorrow two days you can pick the time and so on and regardless of what time you pick if you choose to you can start the stream at any time so if you just want to start it right now you can leave that it doesn't matter what you said there by the way sorry for dog barking sounds if you hear any it's the neighbor's dog when you're ready here click create event and it will automatically move you to the next step and here there's some advertising of another software that you can use for live streams i've never used it here's where you pick the custom thumbnail for your live stream wait a bit and there you go thumbnail is loaded and then you select your bitrate now you can see the recommended bit rates for different resolutions. I stream at 720p, which is 1280 by 720. And my bit rate is uh, 2.5k. So I pick that. And then more options appear below. Uh, for Open Broadcaster, we have to pick other encoders. Leave it like that. And here's the key thing, the stream name. You have to copy this whole string of symbols. You have to copy it. And you have to go back to the broadcasting settings of your open broadcaster software and paste that stream name in the stream path field, this one here. Now going back to YouTube, you go to live control room and you see this screen here. It tells you that it's not receiving any data right now because you're still not streaming. And this is where you start your stream and where you stop it, basically, where you control it. And now we go back to the open broadcaster, make sure the uh, game capture is set to the game you want to stream. Also, I forgot to mention that here you can display, you can choose to display your mouse pointer or not. And um, you can set your gamma if, if the game is too dark. And you should enable stretch image to screen. If you did all that correctly, the game that you're running right now should be displayed in the open broadcaster screen and then you click start streaming. Now don't worry, that will not start your stream right away. Just click it and go back to YouTube. You should wait a few seconds, but in the live control center or live control room, you should see this sign that says that uh, stream status is good and that you're streaming, and then you should click preview the stream. When you click that, you'll see a message up there saying that they're preparing your stream, and you should wait probably somewhere around 30 seconds to one minute tops, uh, if something goes wrong, you can refresh the page, don't worry. And then you should start the preview player. You know, this player that you see here on the button. You should start it. And if everything's fine, you should see the thing that you're live streaming in this preview player. If it doesn't start, try refreshing the page. Try again in, in a few seconds. It should work. Sometimes I've had a few issues with it, but most of the time it's working. And now, what you see in this preview screen... Now, keep in mind that you'll hear the sound too, so you may want to mute that. What you see here is what people will see on the live stream if you start streaming. So, at the point where you want to start streaming, just click the button that says Start Streaming and you go live. You click Start Streaming and you should see those messages and a red button that now says Stop Streaming and a sign that you are live. And on that same page, on the top right corner, you can see Watch on Live page. You click that and you will be transported to the actual video and the actual stream that is already running where you can read comments and post comments and stuff like that. So as you can see, we're streaming and everything is working. So that was the end of this video. I hope it was helpful and I hope you have no or very little issues with live streaming on YouTube. Stay tuned and be good.